Hi everyone, Dan Gunner from Insane Forensics. Welcome back to Tech Talk Tuesday. Today, what we're going to talk about is one event ID to rule them all. We're going to talk about the mo probably the most important event ID that you could use during a threat hunt. Um, so let's hop right into it. So why this event ID is important is if we jump into MITRE ATT&CK and we look at T1021001 into the use of remote desktop protocol, this is a very common technique that's used. Um, a lot of people still do have RDP either exposed out to the internet or they have RDP between trust zones in their network. Um, and this MITRE ATT&CK technique is just focused on how attackers tend to abuse RDP um, across trust or trust boundaries, whether it be internal to external or whether it be internal to internal. As of today, when we were putting together this presentation, interestingly enough, about three and a half million um, Shodan has about three and a half million hosts with RDP out to the world. Some are probably obviously honeypots, but a lot still might have RDP and especially vulnerable versions of RDP exposed. Even if you don't have RDP exposed out to the network, um, it's still important to consider the event ID we're going to talk about because if an attacker does something like drop Mimi cats to harvest passwords, they might then use RDP or they might use another network authenticated service um, to pivot or to get across your network. So again, regardless of if you have RDP facing out or if it's being used internally in your network or other Windows services that use authentication, the event ID we're going to talk about today is going to be really important for catching this type of technique and tactic used in your environment. Groups using this, um, specifically to RDP, just about all of the major ones, some of the crime rings, and, you know, very wide mix of countries there. So the use of this technique is really important and that's why we're definitely going to talk about how you can find it in one log that especially helps you find that. So RDP and Windows authentication logs are incredibly important both for this attacker side and for insider threats um, as well as many other techniques. But let's hop right into the log and show you which one that is. So Windows security log of NID 4624. Um, if you don't know about this, in the Windows security logs or in the Windows event logs and the security log, 4624 is what successfully or what records successfully authentication requests to a Windows machine. Information included in this includes both the user and si or, or system login events. This has things like your username, your domain, the process that's involved in it, um, the source IP and port, and honestly a whole lot of other metadata if you want to even dig deeper, or if you want to take your hunts to the next level, some of the metadata in there might be useful for certain hunts. Um, you should also consider adding 4625 unsuccessful logins. We're not going to talk about those today. We're just going to focus on 4624. Um, an awesome event log reference. Um, we use this one all the time. Freely available just out on the internet is Ultimate Windows Security's uh, Encyclopedia of Security Logs. With this, what's nice is for a lot of the event IDs, they'll actually show you samples. So if you don't have it in your particular event log that you're looking at, you can kind of see for certain of the log IDs what the fields look like, and often it'll tell you what the fields are. Um, and some of the pages like login and logout, what's cool is they'll actually show you, okay, during this part of login, this event's created. During this part, this event's created. And so if you have something like Kerberos, where there's a lot of ticket requests and different things happening in the domain, what's nice with this is with that Ultimate Windows Security site with the free resource out there, you can see not just 4624, but some of the other event logs that are associated with logins or with whatever, you know, part of that operating system or part of the network that, you know, the attacker is interacting with. So again, 4624 is what we're going to talk about today. Um, when we get into this login type, you, or you have the login type um, with this event login, these are the different login types they are, or they have. And why this is important is the login type is actually a critical field um, because this event log actually captures many different operations going on in the computer. So you have kind of your type two, which is your physical keyboard login. This is a user that's actually sitting at the console, logging into the computer. If you go to the event type, this is going to be event type two. If they're logging into the computer, but it's over the network, if you go down to type 10 remote interactive, this is where it includes things like RDP, like remote assistance, like some of the terminal access. 
Um, so very quickly, if you're looking for, hey, someone at the keyboard versus someone doing it remotely, you would say, okay, I'm going to look for two instead of 10. Likewise, if you're looking for someone remotely and not at the computer, you would say, okay, let me look for that type 10 remote login. Um, likewise, you might also see cached interactive. So if it's a domain login and it's cached on the laptop outside the network, you'll see type 11. Um, this might help you know, hey, you know, I'm not going to see probably domain controller logs because this login was done from cache credentials on the Windows system itself. The other event IDs that are interesting in here are like the type three. So when you have share folders mapped on the network, um, you could actually have network logins, the type three logins from host to host. If you have scheduled tasks, you're going to have the type four batch login. So if someone's using a scheduled task, which is a different MITRE attack or attack technique, um, you could look for type fours. And so this event log isn't just for the RDP one we talked about up front. You can use it quite a lot. Type seven's interesting. So if the computer's locked and they're unlocking it, you're going to get a type seven. Um, so again, why this type login type field is important is because it begins to give you context of what the 4624 event is specifically looking at. So when we look at an example here, what we did is we took an event log from one of our, this is actually from one of our demo machines, um, and we loaded it into Elastic. Um, we'll talk about how to load it into Elastic in a minute. And what we did is we filtered by the login types. Um, and if you look here, we have event provider, the code, you can see that login types that we did, or login type, the third column that we talked about a lot. You see the process that actually logged in. So if you look at login type, right, for the type 11 for the cache credentials one, you'll notice that's under the user 32 process um, to where the type five, some of the service logins, those are tied to ADV API or to whatever other service or process is associated with those. Um, you also see the domain can kind of be different. So from the actual logins by a user, you have Microsoft account. Um, and in this case, because it's a Microsoft account, you actually see the email address associated with the account. In this case, in Windows 10, it's using a Microsoft account associated with the Gmail address. Um, and then you actually have the SID at the end. So if you're using the SID for another analytic, it's actually coming straight out of the Windows event log. So this is kind of what a table might look like in Elk and how you might begin pivoting through this. Um, and we've done thread hunts to where we've loaded in like 50 gigs of Windows event logs. And so when you get into loading, you know, tens or hundreds of gigs of event logs, maybe even terabytes, um, loading them into Elk and kind of building a table like this to where you can pivot through them is really going to help you scale your threat hunt. Um, but with Elk, we're able to, you know, process through each of those fields, whether it be login types, process, domains, accounts, really whatever info we need to to find the suspicious behavior. Um, and we can also do text searches with this. So oftentimes when we're loading event log data in Delk, we'll also bring the raw XML event um, and then use elastic search feature to you know, look for what we need to in there, right? Use the power of elastic search engine there to maybe find things that might not nicely be in a field. So how we loaded this up, quick nod to a project that I worked on a few years ago and we published out, um, there's a, Python library called EVTX to Elk. Um, there's usage information on the Dragos link. It's out on GitHub. But if you're looking to take kind of what you saw today and load the event logs into Elk, one option is EVTX to Elk. You could also use, you know, LogBeat. You know, that's uh, Elastic's way of loading it in. There's a few other options too, depending on what you want to do. And if you're even using uh, tools like Security Onion, or, you know, I think Help probably has an option too. Um, oftentimes, a lot of those projects will also have mechanisms, whether it's through Logstash or Logbeats or um, you know other mechanisms, basically to load those event logs in. But what we used today was EVTX Elk because we're partial to it because we wrote it. So brainstorming how you can actually use this. So we talked about what 4624 logs are, but how do they connect to threat hunting? Um, you know, one of the big questions you can ask, um, begin to ask is, you know, what external trust zone IPs are connecting to assets, you know, inside the trust zone you're looking at with RDP or other authenticated and log services, right? 
what we're going to at here is looking for, hey, what should the baseline of logins be? You know, whether it be usernames, time of day, um, what services, I know I'm hitting the next few bullets here, but you know, figuring out what does normal look like in my event logs when I load this in. Um, and you could even take something like if you're working on a shift schedule, you can say, well, you know, let me look for users that are operating outside of their shift schedule, right? Um, and where this might be useful is going back to kind of the example of if this is being done internally and an attacker took Mimi Cats and dump passwords out, um, you know, if an attacker is using harvested passwords, when you start building these hypotheses off of the event logs, you know, you might find that, hey, I see someone, you know, account stuffing um, and using this account over the network. Um, the other thing that this does is help you connect login events to other APT group techniques. When you're timelining out a series of events in a threat hunter, you're trying to build context on, you know, kind of behavior that you're starting to see and you're starting to pull the thread to see the context. Um, event logs are going to be a very powerful thing to see. Hey, you know, I see something weird going on here. You know, did I see a remote login from a weird host on my network or external around the time? And if you use this, you might see, okay, now I see kind of another um, chain in this attack chain or another link in this attack chain. These ideas are just a few generic ideas. Um, as you get to know your environment and as you work through the specific scope of your threat hunt, um, you're probably going to find more fruitful and specific examples um, of things to start with. But we wanted to start with brainstorming these because this is at least one starting point you can go with forward. So thanks for joining in this week. Um, we wanted to talk about why 4624 um, login events and the Windows event logs are really critical. There's a lot you can do for them, whether they're for RDP or for other MITRE attack techniques, or you know whether you're just trying to build out a timeline of what's going on as you're going through your threat hunting efforts. Thanks for joining in this week. We hope to see you back next week.